We're doing a series of vlogs looking at where we're at and where we're going after three years of off-grid permaculture homesteading. For the Sharing Our Journey series, and we're on the water one right now, I don't want to repeat myself and Carrie have to repeat ourselves There's a whole bunch. I know there'll be uh, rhetoric for you guys to have to hear everything over and over again. <clears throat> so, in preparing for major rain, did a video there and that talks about all of our catchment in the field. So, like the swales here, these are the mini swales and then the big swale here that's all along there and then into the pond. So, preparing for major rain, we talk about all that. And then in cabin tour part one, the off-grid cabin tour part one, uh, my lovely wife Carrie talks about the hot water system. Um, so we'll be linking both of those. And then cabin tour part two again, like I said, talks about all the catchment off of our roof and that whole system. So just so you know, I don't want, I'm not going to repeat all those details because we go in detail there on some of that. So that's where we're at. And what we'll be doing next is lessons learned. What we've learned from all that we've done, uh, all the mistakes we've made, which are plenty, and then we'll share what our goals are for the future. How can we design it and um, make it better for us and our family and, and for others? What's the first thing on your mind about that? Well, for our rainwater catchment system, for the main tank into our cabin, we used a manual shutoff valve, and we would really like to develop a automatic system. Again, the details on that are on um, off-grid cabin tour part two. Uh, I show the valve and what needs to be done. And basically, there's ones that have a float in them, so that they fill up, and once the float fills the top, gets to the top, then it shuts it off and then uh, all the rest of the water can then overflow into the tank. So that's the automatic type and that would be that would be better because mm -hmm. remembering to leave it open when it does rain for the initial clean off of the roof, um, it's called a pre-rinse, leave it open and then to go close it after it's rained for a while and then remember in the pouring rain, in the pouring <laughs> rain and then to remember later to go open it back up again. Mm -hmm. And then to close it again, so you see. We also are trying to figure out how to get a shower system. We like baths, but it would be really nice to figure out some sort of a shower system. So we're working on some different ideas for that. I just want to show you in the bathroom our shower. And you can see how high it is here. It's like as high as my shoulder. And when you step into the sh to the tub, it's not even quite that high. <laughs> it's a little lower, it's like chest high. And we put it low like this, hoping that we had enough water pressure to be able to take a shower. Let's see. Here's how much pressure we have. Now let me pull this up and see about taking a shower. See how just it just if you can see that. Yeah, it's just it's just barely coming out of there. I mean, I guess we could, but right now our tank is totally full. This is going to take me to something that I wish we had done different. Somehow I wish we would have gotten more pressure into our lines. So built that tank higher, but I couldn't build it any higher actually. I built the tank absolutely as high as it could so that the gutters where we're catching all the rain from, the gutters still had enough fall to be able to fall into the top of that tank. So that tank is absolutely as high as we could do it. So if we're going to do it any higher, we would have had to have built the roof higher <laughs> or gotten a different kind of tank that was bigger around and not as tall. Hey, babe. <laughs> hey. I was just going to mention that one of our goals for maybe getting actually two goals for showering in the future would be to put some sort of a holding bucket or container up high um, situated up here and then we can just manually open or close a, a valve or tip it somehow if it's like we've seen people use like gardening buckets <laughs> with a spout on it so that's an idea and then also an outdoor shower would be really great for in the summertime so we've seen some neat ones on YouTube where people do very simple solar heated 
uh, showers outside. So that's another goal for the future. Hi, Esther Pie. <laughs> what you doing? Didn't your mama teach you not to talk with your mouth full? <laughs> yeah, so having more pressure uh, is, is lesson learned. We learned that the amount of pressure we have, we, we, we've not tested how much pressure it actually is, but the amount of pressure we have is just not quite enough. Uh, I think one of the biggest lessons with rainwater catchment that we learned early on is that if we, if we had had the money <laughs> initially, we would have gotten insulated painted tanks or dark right. colored tanks. We just got the cheapest that we could afford and they were not insulated and in, uh, clear, well, white. And so now we're having issues with algae in one of our tanks that's not covered and we've had freezing issues. So yeah. If you can afford to get an insulated and dark colored tank, that's the way to go. Or if those tanks were inside. Right. So we have a friend up, up the way, a neighbor basically, that he put his tanks inside. So like they have a, like our patio, if it was closed off um, and insulated and everything, he, he put it in that room. Um, basically like a mud room. So he had a mud room and he put the, his whole water system, his tanks and everything inside the mud room. Mm -hmm. So which accomplished that same thing. Mm -hmm. Another thing back to um, the tank is that if it was a little bit bigger, that would be great. It's a 1500 gallon tank. For a family of our size, uh, 3,000 gallon would be better. But what you can do to supplement that is if you have a spring. What we do is once it starts drying up and we're not getting much rain, tank's getting down low, we put the sump pump in here and start our generator and sump pump from the spring and fill up our tank. It's getting close to the dry season in Missouri, so we want to fill our tank before spring gets low. Here's our sump pump pumping water into our tank. We put this net and stuff around it to keep from dirt getting in there. And here's the hose. And here's the hose up into our tank. And here it is going into the tank. So that's a pretty good system. Um, again though, if that tank had a larger capacity, we wouldn't have to do that. We wouldn't have to do that. Or if we did, it would, have, it would be really rare, you know, that we would have to do that. But also, the surface um, that we have that we're catching off of is not really a big enough surface to fill up a 3,000 gallon tank. If we added the porch and the main roof, it would be. But just the main roof, really it's about, because there's only been maybe a handful of times in three years where that, that tank is overflowed. Um, so that's another thing that we learned actually is to put an overflow on your tank. Make sure you have an overflow. Which we knew, we just have not had the time <laughs> to, to put them in. So they just overflow however they want to. And because they're outside, um, it's not really a big deal. No. And even the tank that we didn't close and all that, the bottom of it is just is resting on the block. So it just, it just pours onto the block and then onto the ground. So it's not, not a big deal. Um, but it'd be better for it to overflow into something or somewhere where we want the water to be instead of just waste, you know. Mm -hmm. We've also come to find out that the big Berkey, I think, is the one we have. We, we didn't get the largest Berkey for filtering our water. We need the ginormous we Berkey. We need the hugest one possible or two Berkey filters for our family because we often are running out of drinking water. And so we're going to have to get another one here soon. Or upgrade to the larger size one. Mm -hmm. Josh, he's coming down to the spring to get some water. How, how often during the day do you have to do this, Josh, for our drinking water? Like three times. Like three times a day. Okay. Go for it. So here's Joshy. This is how we get our drinking water. Cool. And Joshy just carries that up and then we pour it into the Berkey. I just want to show you guys how nice the spring is flowing. There, you can see that. This is set up so we can, <clears throat> with a hose, so that we can turn this sump pump on 
and I rigged this deal put a bunch of holes in that in the bottom of it and then the screen and then the sump pumps in there to keep it clean so we can pump from this and fill up mom and dad's uh, trailer with water so they were getting very good clean water in their trailer you want to say anything about our spring or getting the water down here why do we come down here all the time why do we come down here all the time yeah that's where we get our drinking water from oh mm. Another lesson we've learned relates to our hot water heating system and actually I explained that in our cabin tour one video so you can check that out if you're interested in hot water system and what we've learned what we're going to do, do differently with that. Yeah. There's many many more lessons that we've learned related to water on the homestead but another cool one is that we love swales and ponds. The system we put in has been awesome and we're looking forward to putting in a lot more swale pond systems on our land. They just are incredible. So. Yeah, it's functioning really well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's exceeding our, our hopes, um, even, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. So that's, that's really cool. We know they work. They work really well. And they work well here in our soil, uh, in our climate. So mm -hmm. that's really cool. So our goals for the future, and hopefully relative in the near future. Um, more swells ponds we talked about that the laneway down to the creek for watering the animals we want to also set up water catchment systems off the chicken coops mm -hmm. uh, so that it'll save a lot of time um, from having to water them uh, as often we still will have to bring them water but when there is rain they'll water themselves and mm -hmm. it'll, that'll be really cool mm -hmm. what else son well we already mentioned a bigger Berkey and we've also mentioned we want to figure out a shower system and let's see another thing that we can do to help our situation in the cabin with the pressure is I could add a little pump on mm -hmm. to the plumbing and just kick that pump on when we need the extra pressure mm -hmm. so then because our solar system won't be able to handle the pump on all the time it would just it would pull down the batteries way too much but we could just kick it on uh, when we need that pressure so like if we're gonna take a shower kick on the pump and then we can actually take a shower. We also want to work on overflow systems for our tanks so we're not wasting that water when they do overflow. Maybe into little garden ponds or or something. Somehow utilize that water when it overflows. Pre-wash, pre-rinse. So that's the another goal for the future is the pre-rinse, um, pre-wash system for our main tank. Um, and then possibly a well. We would love to get a well with a, a solar, a solar well. So have the, um, the pump be on there, solar powered, and then add a simple pump to it, which is a big, you know, hand pump. Uh, you can add that to a well. So then we can have the option of just going out there and pumping a little bit, or um, if there's good solar gain happening, good sun, shine, then we can use the uh, solar pump mm -hmm. on it. We do also want to put in a, uh, a duck resort. <laughs> We want to put a big, a big pond swell system in and then on that pond we actually want to put an island out to it and maybe do like a little bridge out to the island and that's where we're going to put the duck coop out there. Um, so, yeah. We'll talk more about that when we get to our birds on the homestead video. Yeah, so. but it relates to water so I thought I'd throw it in here. <laughs> so that concludes the water systems here on Thousands of Roots. Thank you so much for watching. Please do um, share, share, appreciate it. Have an awesome day. See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>